want to start with your chart or you want a face-to-face -face conversation first? Let's just have a face-to-face -face because I think the chart has been <clears throat> very similar um, in the past years. So overall, I just give a summary of uh, the market in San Diego County and uh, um, the inventory is down um, since 2019. It's down by one month from 1.8 months of inventory to 0.8 months. And then in terms of the price, um, as everybody expected, the average price actually went up by almost 20%. 2019 was 832. 2020 December was almost a million dollar at 978. So that's increase of almost um, 20% at 17.5%. Um, 17 when we look at the median price, which is a little different than the average, because the average take a very, very high and very, very low and make the averages. But when we look at the median price, it gives us a better picture of what the San Diego market is. Um, in December 2020, we had median price of 749. In uh, December 2019, so we actually have a price of 655. Still, that's an increase of 14.5% which is crazy um, for the market. And then um, I, I think, Kenny, if you remember from the chat, remember one of the questions you asked me is, it looked like there was a downward trend for San Diego since October. And yes. you were asking me whether the price is going to go down or not. And my answer, um, and my answer was not, because um, in the past few years, San Diego's market is very seasonal. Every, pretty much every year, from October, the price goes down. So usually October had one of the highest price point, and then November goes down, and then December goes down even further. And uh, generally, sometimes downward, but then starting February, the price go up. And the trend has been like that every year for the past few years. So, so it's a seasonal, a seasonal uh, occurrence. I mean, it's not like it's unusual. Yeah, it's definitely not unusual. I don't know about other city, but in San Diego, that's always the case. So I'm not typically concerned. Uh, I think, you know, I mean, if people ask me whether the market's going to crash or not, I say, well, let's kind of wait and see, you know, the months of January and February, because I think that will give us the better indications. However, you know, if you ask me for the predictions of 2021, I would say the market will still go up. And it based on um, a few factors. First of all, um, CoreLogic has predicted San Diego will be the fastest growing city in the entire United States. The price oh, wow. will go up highest, <laughs> almost 10%. Yeah, it's oh, crazy. Wow. Okay. And uh, the reason being, you know, um, it's, it's based on the uh, job market because how much you can afford for the house and how much higher you want to pay for the house depends on whether you have a stable job or not, right? Right. And so mm -hmm. in San Diego, we have some major um, employer. We have biotech industry. You know, I have clients who work for biotech company who are creating cure for COVID-19. And those companies will do well. In fact, my clients are doing well. You know, they get raised, they go to a different company, you know, they get even bigger raise. So I think, you know, the market, the job market is strong. And we have pharmaceutical, we have inventory. We, um, the only things that is done in San Diego, just like the rest of the United States is hospitalities. Unfortunately, hotel, travel, restaurants are not doing as well, but that is not the major sector of the San Diego County. And that's why my prediction is, um, yeah, San Diego's market is going to go up. And uh, Coraj, you say it's going to go up by eight point, I think eight point three percent. Let's see whether that's going to work. <laughs> All <laughs> right. Um, well, that's uh, that's generally good news for people that want to buy homes in uh, San Diego, either for owner occupied or for investment. Yeah, and and I think the thing is, you know, I would say Coraj also, um, you know, explain the San Diego market is not overpriced. Um, based on the job market, San Diego actually is at the normal market because you when you need to factor into inflations, you need to factor into um, wage increases. And so um, San, Diego, San Diego is actually in a pretty stable market. Um, 
So um, one last thing I want to talk about, you know, in terms of the number is the um, the average market time. So how long does the, does it take for a house to be sold once you list on MLS? Um, as we could know, it's definitely uh, much lower than before. Um, the median median day um, 2019 was 22 days. So once you put the house on the market within three weeks, you should have an offer accepted. Right now, uh, in 2020, in December, we only have 11 days. And oh, that wow. is at our low market. That's so a 50% think, reduction. Yeah, definitely. That's a 50% reduction, which is very crazy. So so those, those, those three main factors, average price, average days on market, and then months of inventories, those three major factors taking into consideration. My personal prediction is, 2021 the price is still going to go up and the problem for this to some degree is for my cash buyer um because um the cash buyers they don't really get a lot of interest at the bank you know less than one percent um but at the same time they don't really want to um pay a huge price you know to compete with the non-cash buyer because typically cash buyer want to get some type of discount. And why don't so you uh, ask them uh, to leverage by investing in multiple properties? Yeah, that's true. I do have clients like that. Um, 2020, I have a few cash buyer. Um, the biggest cash buyer in 2020 was uh, $2.15 million. And that buyers also bought an investment property. The reason that I saw buyer why they decided to buy cash instead of doing loans was they don't really know what to do with the money. You know, they, they don't want to invest in stock. They don't want to invest anything else. So they rather just pay into the house. So this is my client who owns multiple investment property free and clear. And so she's getting cash income every month. And the 2.15 was a primary home. So she doesn't need to worry about monthly payments, things like that. I yeah. understand. You see, my thoughts are that if you have 2.15 mm -hmm. and interest rate being so low, if you just leverage the financing, you can actually have your own home that you can live in and also have a few uh, investment properties that are uh, giving you a uh, rental income every month. Cool. Yeah. And she already had that. I think she just didn't want to add more because she moved from a smaller home to a bigger home. So I think I think she owned like four or five investment property now. We, I which see. we all manage. So which is really nice. Um, but that's pretty much the summary so 2020. And uh, I do have some tip for um, buyers and uh, agents how to get your offer accepted in the very competitive environment. Because I think, you know, knowing what the market is, you need to be proactive. Don't just sit there and wait, say, oh, market's too strong, market's too competitive. What am I going to do? I mean, there are certain things you could do. So, um, for example, um, you want to, um, the very, very easy thing is you should have your agent as the listing agent. So the buyer's agent should as the listing agent. What does it take to get my offer accepted? You will be surprised. Um, sometimes the listing agent actually will tell you what it does need to take to get your offer accepted. Because if you don't ask, you don't get. Well, that's and a very then, good point, Jean. Uh, I'm a listing agent myself, so uh, I get buyer's agents. I mean, I get like, okay, 30 offers on one of my recent listings. Now, how, who, who am I going to be spending time talking with? Obviously, the person that asked me, what would it take for my offer to get accepted? And I, I, I'm willing to share with them what it would take. Instead of submit your offer and wait for a counter offer, which, uh, which is not very helpful, be more proactive and ask the listing agent, well, you know, Kenny, my, my client really liked the property. Why don't you uh, tell me exactly what I need to do? Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, once for a while, I will have an agent told me, like, you know, I'm not going to you know, help you cheat the system. I need to be fair to everybody. Then so be it, right? There were there are so many different type of agents, and for me, I don't I don't want to leave any stone unturned. So that's you should always ask. That's what the agent agent can do. 
Another thing, um, I'm throwing buyer's agent. Another thing, buyer's agent can help the buyer. And this actually has seen it, people play differently. So one other thing is you will put your approval a month. I have some buyer in the past, if they are over 800, they get a pre approval 800. <laughs> if they are over in the household 850, then they ask their loan agents to get an offer uh, pre approval for 850s. I say don't do it this way because as a listing agent, you know, I'm, I'm helping my seller. I want to pick someone who I think is going to be really, really strong in the escrow process. They are going. They are not going to blink the eye, you know, if um, if the appraisal didn't come in by ten thousand dollar or things like that. So get my recommendation is get the strongest possible pre-approval later as you can get. And an example I can give you is, you know, everybody know Bill Gates, right? So if if Bill Gates is not going to get a loan to buy a house, <laughs> he bought a forty million dollar cash. But let's say if he really, really want to get a pre-approval, having a loan. And he's only buying a two million dollar home. Do you think, as a listing agent, when I look at Bill Gates' offer, I know he only worth two million dollars? No, right? I Obviously know he's worth much, yeah. much more. So right. why play the games on the pre-approval? You want to show people your buyer is very, very strong, and yeah. so go for the highest possible you can. And there are many other tips I can share, and I can share in a sub uh, oh, yeah. sequence of videos. I think I that's a very, that's very good me. point. That's a very, very good point. When listing agents discuss uh, the various offers with the seller, they're going to look at the strength of the buyer. You know, if uh, the, the property does not appraise, is this buyer a risk to cancel that, that for cancellation? If this buyer could be a risk, we're going to skip that buyer. Correct, correct, correct. So, yeah. So they are just a, today, just a couple tip. Um, you know, we can discuss more in the future, but I see, you know, um, if an agent is not uh, pivoting, I guess that's the word pivoting, then you're going to lose many of your offer. But if you can pivot, if you can figure out a way to get a buyer's offer accepted by using, you know, creative, you know, creative ways, you know, or even just, uh, you know, strategize on the buyer's pre-approval, um, that will significantly help your buyer's chance um, their offer being accepted. All right, thank you so much, Jim, for a wonderful presentation.